So welcome everybody to reserve seating. It is F this movie fest week. And we got to do things big this week because it's the it's the Super Bowl of F this movie week. Go big or go home, you two. <laughs> big or go home. So we are talking about two crazy movies from 1994. Yeah. Um, both summer 1994 movies, both based off of comic book properties, although the shadow also crossed over several media. Yes. Um, including yes. radio. Um, so we are going to be talking about The Crow and the shadow and we are joined by two very 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 special guests <laughs> jb oh. and jan b oh i Hello. thought you were wrong <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rob, for having Rob, us. rob's rob's a given i'm here every week rob's rob's a given. yeah i like rob so much that he's here every week i'm just i'm just eating hot dogs <laughs> onions sometimes sometimes no onions depending on my mood yeah, before we get into the reviews proper, we should shout out the Maxi Dog scene Hell yeah. in the Pro, where it's a comical amount of mustard and ketchup that they put on Ernie Hudson's hot dog, and Raquel Davis doesn't seem to know how to eat a hot dog. <laughs> this, all right, so if we're gonna get into it, let's just get into it here because this yeah. was my, this was my question to you. I as 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 someone who's not a Midwesterner, right? I yeah. I I have I have learned in getting to know you fine folks, I have learned a great deal about the sort of sanctity of the hot dog. Um and the idea that the hot dog, you know, is a sandwich. There's a lot going on. I grew up eating very sort of simple ballpark water dogs, like just very sort of, you know, a, a dog on a bun, and that's about it. You said a comical amount. Is that a comical yeah. amount? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's yeah. Yeah. the the yeah. barometer it's, was for that. It's a weirdly long, skinny hot dog. Okay. It's a lot of mustard and ketchup. And okay. yeah. like only a five-year-old puts that much ketchup on a hot dog. It's, I would argue for traditional Chicagoans, ketchup should never be placed yeah. on a hot dog. Okay. I would I'm here. I'm most, pure. Most will say that. I agree with that. It's an interesting moment because, like Jan said, the hot dog looks like it's like a Subway sandwich size when she's holding it up vertically to eat it. And then she, like, is angling it, and then she puts the hot dog in her mouth and then removes it from her mouth. <laughs> and it's like... Doesn't and know. Like, too. She just, like, is like, I got the angle wrong. I need to try this again. But it's also the camera angle and yeah. the fact that the actress seems to think it's a taco which, given its size, is not surprising. Or like she has to parallel park it into her <laughs> mouth yes. somehow. So I want to start maybe with uh, our special guest because this was your first time watching The Crow. Oh, my understanding. excellent. Okay. Yes. So I'm coming from it from a very different perspective. I think, Rob, you are too. As am I. Like, yes, of course. Grew yeah. up with this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am, I am cautiously dipping my toe in the water because as I told Jan as we were watching it, in the middle part of my career, mm -hmm. when I was teaching film study, The Crow was the favorite movie of every male student I had for 10 years. Yes. Later, it was replaced by Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints, yeah. <laughs> but there was a very lengthy Crow period, yeah. and I'm here to ask you two gentlemen why. Okay, so... I think that the movie's very integral to the grunge alternative rock scene period. So if you grew up with Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, Pearl Jam, I think it's really kind of the grunge movie. I mean, you could argue singles, possibly, but like The Crow is all out MTV grunge movie also. And I, I need to find a the right way to say this because it's obviously like a delicate movie to talk about in certain aspects because sure. of the tragic passing of Brandon Lee during the filming of the movie. Um, but I think that just like the Heath Ledger performance in The Dark Knight is sort of um, pulsating through the movie. It's sort of like a current through the movie. I think that that is a major part of the crow's legacy that i don't know would be there if it weren't for his loss during the movie i think that they're just kind of intertwined um on this viewing and i want to get your guys's take on this um i've never felt more that brandon lee's performance is almost as like a friendly ghost of the movie 
it's interesting because like he was alive for most of the scenes that he shot. There's some digital compositing, like in the scene where he goes up to um, put on the face paint and everything like that. That's actually a stunt double. It's one of them was Chad Stahalski, who's the director of the John Wick movies. Mm-hmm. He was really? Brand, a brand oh, wow. of directors, yeah. Um, but he just, he feels like a, a, a presence um, in a way that's sort of appropriate for the movie in a way that, I don't think it would feel that way if he, you know, preferably had lived throughout this experience and had a long career. I don't usually like to frame it this way. I'm slightly younger than Adam and I'm younger than Adam enough where I was more of the early 2000s hot topic generation than, (laughs) than, than, you like, and I do mean no, that it's genuinely. It's a subtle but important difference. It is a subtle, like I am just younger enough than Adam where this actually would matter. Where, where yeah. like the the sort of grunge era and the two thousands hot topic like system of a down era, era, yeah. where era. there is a there is a delineation between those two, but the crow is equally important to both. Like it, the wow. crow sort of spanned that time between those two things. And um, again, agreeing with that, like, I think I made a joke on Letterboxd, like, if you didn't date somebody whose entire personality was the crow, <laughs> like, yeah. you were the person whose entirely entire personality was the crow. You know what I mean? I'm like, raising that, my that, hand because that's yeah, kind of yeah. how it was for a couple like, of years. Well, that yeah. explains a lot, um, Rob, because the first thing I was going to say is that this movie seems to be MTV noir superhero. But what you just said Mm -hmm. explains it a lot better. The Crow is as if Hot Topic made a movie. It's it's very much like Alex Proyas is an insane person, and I love his like maximalist approach to things. Like it it is an it's a music video. I mean, it is. It's very much a music video. Surprised me when I found out that Proyas directed it because correct me if I'm wrong. He did Dark City. He did. That was his movie right after The Crow. Yes. Right. The Crow was his resume for doing Dark City. Dark City. Okay. I think Brandon Lee is put in, put in a strange situation, though. And again, I'm coming to the movie with none of this generational baggage mm-hmm. or Same. a jacket that I can wear. That the movie script demands for him to be this posing, dark presence and to mm-hmm. do all these horrible, violent things. And then that's juxtaposed with scenes with the girl and Ernie Hudson where he talks like a normal guy. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm left to think, so he was raised from the dead, and now he's schizophrenic. Well, he's kind of Patrick Swayze in Ghost. And as yeah. I'm watching, I keep expecting the crow, the actual bird, bird, to go away after a while. But the film is so incessant with those close-ups of the crow. It's yeah. like, are they worried that 12-year-olds are going to turn to each other in the theater and say, uh, what was the name of this movie again? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 dude, it's the crow. Crow Wrangler was just like, no, you don't understand. This crow looks amazing in Cross Up. I had recently seen Showdown in Little Tokyo and Rapid Fire again. And it's really impressive to compare that performance to Brandon Lee's performance in The Crow because it's totally different where in those two other movies, he's like really dialing up the charm and he's more of like a Van Damme, Wesley Snipes type of on-screen persona. He can do a lot with comedy and everything like this. And this is more stoic and kind of sensey boy, like emo and mm-hmm. everything like that. So it was mm-hmm. kind of an, an indicator that he had a lot more range. Yeah, I feel like we don't really get enough. Either we get too much of him or we don't get enough Mm -hmm. they're they're kind of i either want to have a lot more of his backstory and his feelings and his right because he is it's it's a it's a really demanding character Mm -hmm. because we get to see hardly any of who he was but and we're stuck with this with this middle like is he alive is he dead is he the good guy that he was as eric draven or is he this vengeful spirit that he is as the crow? And he has to balance that. So I I wish either we had a lot more time to develop or a little less time where he's just this mysterious, right. where you never know. Um, yeah. It made me wish I could have seen Brandon Lee in more things because I don't feel like I got enough of a sense of who he really is as yeah. a performer just from this. And maybe that's because his performance was cut he- short. 
the movie ends up being much more of like an aesthetic statement like yeah. a vibe yeah. like a vibe thing than a movie a narrative with characters it really that's does. a really good way to put it rob because and i wouldn't say i deliberately avoided the movie i just i just didn't get a chance yeah. to see it yeah. and felt that spending time with 10 years worth of 14 year olds right would substitute <laughs> for for watching the crow but when i finally sat down to watch it it's immense popularity yes. surprised me yeah I, I i just love kind of like rob said it's a it's a vibes movie it's like an aesthetic um the production design is really kind of neat to see nowadays because it's so much miniatures and a lot of models models yeah. and i was doing I mean, the whole time i'm like it's only a model it's only a model it's, it's a got model. a great look to it it's got a great villain michael wincott kind of stepping up to like his big league bad guy performances after guy of gisborne and robin hood and some of smaller like talk radio and things like that and he's really um, good in talk radio i also like the trope that we think the gang with um the guy from 48 hours are the villains yeah. And then we it's revealed there's a level above, which happens all the time in film noir. We're following who we think is the villain, but then we find out the villain has a boss. So you talk about the aesthetic, and I think um, it definitely has its own aesthetic, but it's also an amalgam of, I saw a lot of Blade Runner influence. Yeah. Definitely a right. lot. Yeah, definitely a lot of um, Batman influence. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a lot of film noir, as uh, JB just said. So it puts them together in its own way. So I think I'm not the audience for this film only because I didn't grow up with it. I didn't, it, it wasn't, I wasn't at the right time to mm -hmm. sort of um, internalize it in the way that other generations did. One thing that Jan and I kept saying back and forth, back and forth, as we watched The Crow and The Shadow is, there is one reason that both of these movies exist. There is one reason why both of these movies got greenlit, and that is Batman. Batman. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I began to wonder if you actually sat down and made a list. How many movies did the incredible success of Batman spawn? You'll so, pardon the pun. Folks who are on Letterboxd. <laughs> If you'd like to follow me on Letterbox, how are you doing it? Nice. On Letterbox, I started a list of 30s comic strip movies made in the 90s. Uh, Batman. How are, you, how are you ranking it? Um, well, I've got, I've got. Uh, well, I don't. I didn't include the Crow on here, which I will add because I felt that the. I wasn't sure that the Crow quite fit, but now that we've had this conversation, I'm I absolutely it. do. Especially oh. is the Shadow on that list? The Shadow, the Phantom, Dick Tracy, Dark Man, the Rocketeer. I put oh, on. Yeah. The the Rocketeer yep. I ranked at the top because I just I adore yeah. the Rocketeer. Um, Everyone was chasing those Batman profits. Yes. And something that I know for a fact is true of uh, The Crow, chasing those merchandise profits. Oh, for sure. Because I have seen more Crow t-shirts in my life than <laughs> many other t-shirts. This movie is a, an album cover more than a movie. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean that with all oh, sincerity yeah. and 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 respect because I agree I agree with the general consensus I think which is like the movie is not that strong, but it makes a really interesting generational statement to people who needed to hear it in a certain way, yeah. and and that's that's where I'm at. I think I I see the the crow T-shirt. It's an album cover. That's what it is, yeah. and I think I that that's powerful. But I can't that's... separate out how good it is anymore because this is yeah. like. I saw on Twitter somebody post it's like what not what are your favorite movies of all time but what are like the 10 movies you've seen the most times mm -hmm. and The Crow is definitely like probably in my top 10 of yeah. seeing it the most times. I have uh and John to talk about merchandise I have a set of Crow coasters my coasters. Jan this is the big chill for Rob and me's Venn yes. yeah. diagram. That's a nice way to put it. But yeah. it's, that's a great way to put it because I yeah. would not be able to separate out anymore how good the big chill is. Right. Because, you know, Adam, you're talking about the, you know, the 10 movies. It's sort of like the movies that made us, right? Yeah. Like everybody is going to have a slightly different list. And 
quality as a movie is not the top. Right. <laughs> it's not the top no. criteria for making no. that list. Again, I invite you to visit your local Hot Topic. Um, <laughs> get, grab yourself a studded belt, you know, some, yeah. some, some, you know, big jeans and a yeah. nice dank t-shirt, like something dark and <laughs> just, you know. It was very just, dark. Piss off your stepdad. I mean, that's the it whole was... thing. <laughs> We're talking about The Crow and The Shadow together, I think mm -hmm. is super interesting. More so than we even thought. We're just like, oh, kind of like, here's the, we thought of maybe one or two points of sort of connection that would make it an interesting conversation. But if you look, there's really a lot of similarities yes. between the two movies. And yet somehow they both have a totally different effect as movies. Protagonists are very similar in that they, they're they these guys who used to be one way and are trying to be another way. There's revenge. There's this the, the 30s comic is aesthetic. There's the, you know, the, the city influence. as this <laughs> environment, this noir kind of environment that they move in the shadows. They're both like that. So there's the, the Batman influences. So there's could really argue, a lot of these similarities. Could we argue that the shadow is the crow for your grandparents? Yeah. Yeah. It's the art deck crow. One movie has hairier chests, and that's the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> it also reminds us of how long. Ian McKellen's film career has actually yes. been because yeah. I wasn't paying attention during the opening credits. And when he showed up, I was like, wait, what? what? You, <laughs> it's weird to see him in a role that underutilizes him this much now oh, yeah. because you're uh, expecting him to be secret bad guy or something because right. yeah, they, you, they you could this, possibly put him in that small of a part. Major star. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I found the shadow to be. It reminded me so much of the Phantom this time. Oh, you bet. Um, like the Treat Williams performance is sort of pitched at the Phantom's pitch the entire time, or vice versa. Um, John Lone, I think, is definitely doing like you know the Treat Williams type of treatments on it, and he's he's kind of like a underrated solid bad guy throughout movies sure. with um. The Hunted and Rush Hour 2 and everything like that. He always is kind of like bringing some kind of little elements of menace that seems bigger than the movie he's in. And I don't know how many of you have seen Iceman. No, I haven't seen it. No. But he's extraordinary in that. Timothy Hutton plays an archaeologist who finds one of our ancestors frozen in the ice. And because it's a movie, they're able to thaw him out. Mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's John Long. And the shadow just look. I mean, it's a Russell Mulcahy movie. Yeah. And if you can say anything positive, and Rob and I are fans of the Highlander series, but like that guy knows how to shoot a movie he and knows how to make like, it look good. It looks great. This movie looks, this movie gets bumped up like a star, star and a half just by the look of it alone. I think budget has a lot to do with that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The aesthetic is so important to both movies. And again, with so many similarities, it's surprising how different the tone and aesthetic is. For right. both, mm -hmm. They're both really dark. They both have this sort of woman sidekick who, in one, and she's the little girl, in one, she's the, you know, the, the woman who will kind of like join in, even though they, they're not part of it, but they are part of it. But like, so there's a lot going on. This, this, the, the characters are kind of similar in some ways. So I love how different they actually are considering how much they have in common. Both films are dark, but it shows the influence of the director and the performers. And I'm thinking mostly the script that mm -hmm. the darkness in The Crow is disturbing and foreboding. Mm -hmm. I find the darkness in The Shadow to be strangely nostalgic and- It is. Um, again, referring to my letterbox list here, there's a period in time where you could just make a movie like this and it was like an established cinematic language. We are borrowing from this old 30s aesthetic and bringing it back. I think that Alec Baldwin is fun in the movie. Yes. He's definitely like goofy and in the spirit of the movie. I do think the only thing that held this movie back from not becoming a franchise was that they didn't have a bigger star than Alec Baldwin. Okay, that's exactly what I was gonna ask. What do you, why do you think Batman went on to continue as a franchise and the neither of these two movies did. And you can say that the reason for the crow is obvious. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure, 
like that's the reason that we would all say, but I'm not sure it would have made a second one even if we still had Brandon Lee. There's more there's more guts to Batman than there is to this. And I think that's why it kept going. This also, felt like a limitation. Have, yeah, you didn't have to be convinced that like Batman was a big deal, like on a gut level. Like the yeah. shadow, you're almost like it's like a salesman's trying to like tell you why it's important. <laughs> it's just like Batman. It's just like Batman. See? Like uh, yeah. uh, oh yeah. I think there might be another reason though. Number one, I don't think the shadow turned a profit. But number yeah. two, and you're guys, you guys are gonna have to fill in the blanks here because I'm I'm going goofy. Yeah. yeah. The hunt for Red October. Yeah. Was a Tom Clancy adaptation with Alec Baldwin. Yes. Yeah. He chose not to continue with that right. series. He made the decision to not. Maybe well, he chose not to. The story I, I heard. They, they got Harrison Ford. The mm -hmm. story I heard was for Patriot Games, Alec Baldwin wanted more money. And they said Paramount or who or the producers or whomever was in charge of the budget said, we'll pay that. But for that amount of money, we can get Harrison Ford. So they just hired <laughs> Harrison Ford. Well, yeah. I will say his voice works so well yeah. as oh, totally. the shadow. And that reminds us laugh. of the radio roots. But I have a question for the three of you. Sure. And I've seen the shadow at least five times. Mm -hmm. When he's wearing the cloak and the hat. Who knows? Okay. Yeah. Do we yeah. ever, do we see him put it on or is it a physical transformation? I don't think the movie is I don't think it's in the reality of movie. Yeah. I think it just exists. I think they want us to. It's like Batman with the black in the eyes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. Think, I don't think the movie is saying he puts that on. I think the movie's just going. No, that's his nose. I think it's but, a perception. But it. But it's not. Like with Batman. Oh no. 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 I, I think it's like a Wolfman transformation. I think it's just Maybe. like because they set up the movie having kind of like a magical reality. So yeah. like you based, might so, based yeah. on what we're shown. Yeah. That's the only explanation. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. But he also metamorphoses it, only when his face is covered and the nose is protruding. He metamorphoses into William Baldwin. Um, I would hate to think that budget was the only reason that they didn't uh, consider a, a sequel because the characters seem definitely to be set up for another shadow. Oh, movie. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. So thank you everybody for, for watching and uh, our discussion on the crow in the shadow, but, but we'd be remiss not to invite you if you're watching this on the day that this video drops, um, join us for F this movie fest on yes. Saturday, February 24th. More 1994 goodness. More 1994 goodness. Um, we will be watching uh, The Mask, Stargate, Terminal Velocity, Cabin Boy, Time Cop, <laughs> and Speed. So go to fthismovie.com, um, click the F This Movie link, and or the F This Movie Fest link, and you will get all the information that you need. Is there a movie that you're most looking forward to? That question goes out to all three of you. Ooh. Yeah. Um, Stargate. I haven't seen it in the dog's age. I'm looking forward to revisiting Cabin Boy because of course I'm a fancy lad. Yes. I've never so seen fancy. I've never seen Terminal Velocity, so I'm into that. Me neither. I really want to see that one. Yes. I think Speed is a really fun capper, so oh, I'm yeah. looking forward to that one a lot. Speed's one of my favorite last movies in the last couple of years. I was very excited to see that at the end. Until next time. <gasps> These seats are uh rising from the dead and seeking <laughs> vengeance on those who have wronged them. Us, all four, all four seats. All four, four of seats. us. You crow. Yes. You Everybody go to Hot Topic and buy something. <laughs> Do it for Brandon. Do it for Brandon. <laughs>